Hello, today I'd like to introduce a small device um, I've been using for quite a couple of weeks now, a few weeks, and uh, perhaps you have seen this in one of my previous videos already. And uh, it, it's actually an uh, adapter, a PCB, with uh, just a small number of um, components on it. And um, it is an adapter to use uh, the classic um, Nintendo Wii controllers um, on the C64. So um, you got some some inputs here, and you got you know, outputs here, and it fits perfectly to the C64. And um, as you can see, I have already provided um, a couple of controllers, and um, just to present the main uh, purpose of this uh, small. Uh, device or whatever we want to call this and um, as I said this is um, made to run uh, those classic Nintendo controllers on, on the C64 and uh, as you may remember they were attached to this uh, Wii mode by this um, kind of um, bulky plug you can see here and um, but the interesting thing is that um, there's a broad variety of uh, controllers available and I just have a few of them available here. So this is the classic nunchuck for the Wii mode which enables you a two hand control and uh, you have a thumbstick and two buttons and some accelerometers and uh, <clears throat> all that uh, stuff that was required to play uh, the first uh, Wii games. And um, Interestingly, due to the um, capabilities of the Nintendo Wii to run uh, other software as well, and um, Nintendo has uh, provided official, uh, let's say, uh, retro releases uh, by themselves, and uh, you were able to use um, the game, the GameCube 64 games as well, and uh, therefore there was a certain need to use normal controllers for the Nintendo Wii as well. Because playing a classic game like Mario or whatever, uh, it's a little bit uh, cumbersome with a remote pointing at a screen or just having it sideways and have a small, uh, small control, small buttons on on the remote. So uh, Nintendo started to offer uh, additional controllers to attach to the remote, and uh, they using this um, plug, which, which I showed you to you. And um, it wasn't taking that much time until other suppliers, third-party suppliers, started to develop other remote and um, remote comp compatible uh, controls as well. So um, I have just a few examples here on my desk. As I said, that's the, the original um, Nintendo Wii nunchuck. And then uh, we have this um, Nintendo... Uh, how is it called? Um, Nintendo controller, and I think that's um, Nintendo Entertainment System, the classic controller, and uh, it's the wired version with uh, just let's say two buttons plus uh, start and select, and the controls on this side, and there uh, is even a better version available, which is uh, wireless, and um, I've used this in uh, some of my previous videos already. And um, interestingly, it comes with uh, four buttons, and um, it is connected by just those uh, small receivers. And um, the next thing is, and this is um, dating back to the beginning of the Nintendo Wii, of the first Wii, it's a wireless nunchuck. So it's basically the same like this uh, white one, but uh, without a cable. And um, I remember that at the Wii itself, it, um, it worked quite horrible so lost connection quite a couple of times and uh, so in the middle of the game you lost one controller so it wasn't really a, a huge pleasure to play for this one but uh, especially for short distances and if you're not um, let's say you're not as active as and um, and the Wii itself if you just sit in front of your television using some I don't know C64 games then uh, probably this is going to work uh, much better and um, just to show you how this uh, small device is built, it is uh, basically a small PCB 
and it comes with a couple of uh, SMD uh, components and um, so <clears throat> if you get this as an assembly kit for example and you have to solder this it requires let's say um, a good eye and uh, a small a soldering device or you're using a, a lens for example to um, just um, enhance your vision so uh, basically it wasn't really very hard to assemble and um, i will post an how to do a video as well about the assembly of this one so actually this is a prototype and it is still in development but um, i think we're coming close to kind of a final release and as you can see, there's a uh, connector here as well. And uh, this can be used to upgrade the firmware on this uh, small device. So you can either use a device uh, like uh, the USB blaster, which is um, quite cheap. I think it's about 10 euros or something like this. And you can uh, program devices like this uh, using a laptop. Or you use this uh, TL866 as um, the A version with this... Um, additional connector here on, on the side and then you simply connect this to your um, uh, PCB or your to, to your Atmega and then you can uh, program this one and um, there's a switch here as well and this is uh, to select several modis and on this um, or a modi on, on this um, device so depending on the controller and depending on your let's say uh, preferences you may switch between different button layouts or something like this and um, in the in the initial phase in the test phase right now if you're using uh, this controller for example then we have the normal fire button on, on uh, button b for example and the up function which is available here at the control cross as well um, is on button a so if you play let's say uh, sam's journey for example or other a jump and runs where you have to use the up function to jump or well, for some people it's more comfortable to use a and um, i found it quite um interesting for playing all the games like uh, the cartridge games i have tested quite recently and uh interestingly since we got this uh, start and select buttons here as well the start button is required to uh, initiate the connection to this uh, wireless uh, receiver here but the select button is um, acting as um, the fire button for the control port one, which is automatically um, the space key on the C64. So if you have uh, games which are require you to uh, press space to start, then you have uh, your con your controller and you can uh, just uh, press select and then you have press key automatically mapped to this controller. And um, this is due to this uh, design that this uh, adapter is using booth ports so we can route uh, functions from port 2 to port 1 as well and uh, what, what we want to do with this one and um, so I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of uh, things uh, for, for this one and um, let's uh, perhaps just connect something like this uh, original nunchuck and this uh, wireless thing and uh, as you can see, when I connect this to the C64, the LED is uh, kind of uh, communicating uh, with you. And uh, now we can, with press of the button, uh, switch between different uh, configurations. And it's uh, presented by different uh, patterns of, um, well, blinking. So that's uh, basically the, the initial configuration. And... Um, well, I think I have already uh, a game running. So let's have a look. We can see something. No, actually, we can't see anything. <clears throat> okay, this could happen. I just learned that... Um, this board in particular requires a keyboard um, to work, which is quite unusual because most of the boards I'm running are without the keyboard when I just have some controllers connected. But uh, perhaps it's um, maybe a dying um, CIA or whatever. I have to investigate this. But uh, that's not the purpose of this video <laughs> quite right now. So, and um, <clears throat> well, then um, 
let's have a look at uh, Moon Patrol, which is uh, a game I just uh, tried yesterday with this um, nunchuck controller here. And um, so basically, there's a um, controller connected to port 1. And uh, we are not going to make that much uh, hassle with all that uh, different options. And as you can see, I can uh, use the thumb stick here right now. I just forgot to jump. And I can use this uh, button at the front as well to jump. And uh, well, should do so as well. And the other button is uh, simply fire. So now we can jump and we can fire. We can move forward and backward. And um, we have to jump as well this point and um, therefore this is quite comfortable well I should really jump so let's continue the game so it's really quite comfortable to play with uh, just one hand and uh, having a fun stick like this and uh, I managed to jump and to shoot and uh, well, as you can see the controls are pretty easy and uh, the interesting thing is, and I think I'm going to mess this up quite horrible right now, um, you can switch the configuration as well. So if I just press the button here and uh, the flashing light goes on, I can use this um, accelerometers uh, connected in this um, nunchuck. And I can uh, move forward and backward and I should jump as well. <clears throat> I can even jump with the nunchuck which is making this game uh, more complicated. So perhaps for, for this <laughs> game in, in particular, it's uh, probably not the best options to use the accelerometers, but it's a very nice feature, I think. So depending on the game, this could be a very nice thing to play with. And uh, perhaps it just requires some, some practice. And uh, well, I, I'm just going to present the, the different possibilities. So. And um, as you can imagine, if you have a more uh, physical game where you have to move in different directions, this uh, could become in quite handy. And um, actually, uh, which is in development, is a function, oh, I jumped early, uh, to, to use this um, movement of the nunchuck as an analog input as well. So, for games like um, Arkanoid or something like this, which are supporting uh, pedals, then you can use the nunchuck to have an, an analog um, motion in, in the game as well. So, so but this is just uh, one one of the features. And um, well, that's that's basically all uh, about to say about this uh, small device. And uh, as I mentioned, this is going to be available uh, quite soon. And um, there's actually a thread in uh, at the forum 64 where we're trying to figure out um, what what's going to be the demand, what's the interest, and um, we're working on uh, two distrib distribution channels. So one will be um, based in Austria and one will be available in uh, Germany. And um, I think the price tag uh, is actually about 10 euros. For the assembly kit, and I think 14, 15 euros, something like this, for an already assembled kit. And uh, depending on your uh, destination, on, on your location, uh, there will be some um, postage fees, some shipment costs uh, on, on top of this. But uh, as I said, uh, we are working on actually two different distribution channels. And uh, what we have in mind as well is to have some uh, small housing, a small case as well to make this a little bit more robust and um, if you really want to use this as a let's say a game device uh, primarily then uh, it's probably a good idea to have some some case around this as well and um, what what's still in development is the support of all those different uh, controllers available on the market right now it requires some some fine tuning especially if you have uh, more than uh, two buttons or something like this then uh, we have to think about what's going to be the layout and what's going to be the usage of all that buttons so uh, especially it's uh, for for this version uh, we have um, as i said the fire and uh, the, the joystick up functions and uh, here we have um, the, the fire as um, 
uh, as we call it, um, a pulsed fire function and um, um, a pulsed uh, joystick up function, which, which makes probably not that much sense for certain games. But uh, this is just uh, one one example of, uh, let's say, the, the different uh, opportunities you have now with this uh, small little device. And uh, I think, and I, I highly appreciate this approach uh, because this this adds a lot of, um, let's say, uh, possibilities to connect different controllers to the C64. So you don't have to get um, stuck with uh, this this classic uh, Competition Pro, which is quite a nice joystick, but it's very noisy and very stiff. And for certain games, it's not very uh, sensitive and and in some of my former videos i'm using this uh, sigma arcade, uh, arcade joystick and um which is a little bit bulky and most of the joystick uh, f require having a, a solid stand or you, you have to use both hands and um therefore this is uh, very easy to to use uh, let's say the nunchuck with just one hand and play with the thumbstick so that's that's basically all I have to say about this uh, small device and uh, I'm going to post the link to the thread in the comment section so if you have an interest in this then feel free to head over to the forum 64 and uh, just um, make some comments there and as soon as the device will, uh, will be available then uh, we may figure out how we're going to ship this to uh, certain places in the world whatever. <laughs> And uh, what's going to be the final, uh, let's say, a feature package or whatever you want to call this. So as usual, thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, kind of interesting to you. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, wishes for this uh, small device, then uh, feel free to use the comment section. And I'm more than willing to, to answer this. And uh, if you want to stay uh, informed about uh, the next progress the next updates then uh, please uh, subscribe i really appreciate this and um well as i said happy playing and thanks for watching bye bye